Here in our key verse for today's message, Jesus, he tells his disciples here, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. But notice there, he says, greater works than these he will do because I go to my father. Now think about that statement for a moment. Greater works. Jesus says that the follower of Christ will do in comparison to the works that he did himself. Do you believe this? Do you believe that you can do greater works than Christ? How determined are you to do just that? Are you a determined servant of Christ is what I ask you today. You see, the very thought that we could do greater works than Christ would cause some of us to hesitate for a moment. It would confuse us. Some of us would even laugh at the very idea that we can do greater works than Christ. I believe we would wonder how it could even be possible for us to do greater works than Christ. Yet we see here in this verse that Jesus was very confident in the fact that we will do greater works than he did. Off the top of our heads in our hesitation, we will consider all the great miracles that Jesus performed and the signs that he showed. Jesus, as we know, he healed the blind. He made the lame walk again. He cured the sick in their illness. He cast out demons. Jesus, we know he even raised a man from the dead. Now, we know that Jesus, he did even more than just the famous miracles that we can think of off the top of our heads. Jesus, he was always very uplifting in his love towards not some people, but towards all people. But he especially uplifted all of those that loved and all of those that followed him. Those he would go on to call his friends. Just in the three years of his ministry, Jesus, he, he opened eyes. He, he shined the light on the truth, on the kingdom of God through his teachings and, and through his preachings. So in summary, when we consider the works of Christ, we would consider that he came with a message of mercy, that he came with a message of forgiveness that he came with the message of salvation, that he came with the message of victory to all people, we would consider that the works of Christ, they were great. So the idea of us being able to do greater works than those that Jesus did would simply leave us baffled, would leave us wondering, how could Jesus say that we would do greater works than he did? How could this even be possible for me? We would consider right away that we cannot make the blind to see just by the touch of our hands. Nor can we lay hands on someone to make them walk again. We would consider that if someone was to grab a hem of our garments that they would not be cured of any kind of illness. In fact, we would look at them like they are the crazy ones. So again, we would wonder why would Christ say that we can do greater works than those that he did. In the book of Acts, the answer is given to us through the apostles. When the apostles first set out in ministering the word of God, they they actually performed some of the same miracles that Jesus did. Yet over time in scripture, if you notice there, the miracles stopped. And the apostles, their preaching of Christ became more prevalent. So we began to wonder, well, why did the miracles stop? If Jesus said that we can do greater works than he did, 
we will wonder, why can't we do the miracles that he did? Why can't we perform those same miracles so that people could believe is what we will wonder. Again, I would suggest to you that it was because greater work than the miracles needed to be done for the soul of mankind. You see, the miracles, they could only go so far. Even when Jesus performed miracles, the people, they would be caught up in the miracles that he did. They would be so amazed in the miracles that he did that they would only follow him to be amazed by the next miracle that that he performed rather than learn to believe and learn to trust, learning to have faith in him. They will walk with him for the next miracle. Jesus, he eventually called those that followed him for that very reason. He called them out and he questioned their faith. And when he did this, the people at that moment in time, they asked him, well, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus, he responded to them by saying, believe in him whom he sent. Believe, have faith in the Lord was Jesus's response. I tell you today that faith, it is still a requirement. Faith, it is still required of mankind today. I would say to you today, you who walk in faith, you who genuinely believe in the Lord, we should not limit ourselves to the idea that we cannot do greater works than those that Christ did because we cannot perform a physical miracle. We must stop limiting what we can do as servants of Christ. We must stop limiting what we can do as children of God. We must stop limiting what we can do as genuine believers of the Lord. Are you limiting yourself today? As shown in the second chapter of Acts, in the first few verses of that chapter, on the day of Pentecost, when the apostles had received the Holy Spirit, Peter, there was no miracle there. He stood up and he preached. Peter, he stood and he preached of Christ to all of uh, the people that had gathered together in Jerusalem. Scripture declares to us that those who had greatly received the message of Christ from Peter, Scripture declares to us that they were baptized that day and about 3,000 souls were added to the kingdom of God. Think about that for a moment. It wasn't a miracle. It was the word being preached by a man that saved, that added about 3,000 souls to the kingdom of God. Not a miracle, but a word. The word of God. Does that sound like it was a great work to you? Sounds like it was a great work to me. It added 3,000 souls to the kingdom of God. There was no physical miracle of healing done by Peter. Just him using his voice to lead people to Christ. You see, we may not be able to physically heal a body with our touch. Yet we as servants are Christ. We are able to minister Christ. We are able to share Christ with somebody Somewhere we are able to do this to anybody if we choose to do so. How many of us are making that choice today? Like Peter, we are able to lead souls away from spiritual death and we are able to lead them to Christ. How is that not a great work? How many of us as a servant of Christ today are participating in this great work? I ask you today. You see, the greater work that Jesus said that we can do is just that loving and caring for others 
to help restore, to help heal, and to help save souls. We may not be able to perform a miracle that can cause the blind to see, to make the lame walk again, but I tell you that we can certainly lead people to the one that can heal, to the one that can save a soul. Do you believe you can do greater works than Christ today? You see, this to me, it is such an interesting thought because some of us, we will still doubt after hearing that. Some of us will still doubt that we can do what Christ says that we can do. Christ did not make this up about you. Christ said that you can do this. Yet we will still doubt that we can be a servant of Christ. We will doubt that we can do even greater works than those that he did. Why do we doubt Christ so much? It's time for us to stop doubting the Lord. We are left with instructions from the Lord as to how we can go about doing even greater works than those that Christ did himself. In the 28th chapter of Matthew's gospel and in the 19th and in the 20th verse, as I referenced in our Sunday school lesson today, Christ instructed us through the Great Commission. And in his instructions, he instructed us to baptize all nations in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. He instructed us to teach all people all things that Christ had commanded of us. In essence, we have been instructed by the Lord today not to be closed off from others. We are to be open to all people around us. We should reach out to all people with the message of the kingdom of God. For this reason, we are to do the great work of ministering Christ, to share the good news, to share the gospel, to preach the name of Christ, to save souls through the sharing of Christ, to save souls by sharing the kingdom of God. Now, someone might ask today, well, what are we saving souls from? In the book of Joel, in the second chapter, the prophet, he prophesied about the day of the Lord. The prophet said that the day of the Lord is coming for it is at hand is what was prophesied. Because the day of the Lord is coming and is at hand, Job prophesied that God would pour out his spirit on all who would believe. That is man and woman. That is sons and daughters. That is all people. Now, as we saw in my sermon last week, Jesus confirmed that the hour is coming and now is. We live in a day where God has poured out his spirit on all of those who have genuinely believed in their hearts. God has poured out his spirit on us to preach his only begotten son, to preach the kingdom of God, to warn of the day that is approaching, the hour that is coming and now is to encourage all of those that are around us to get ready because Jesus is on his way here. For this reason, we are able to do the greater work of ministering the good news. Again, I ask you today, how many of us as a servant of Christ are participating in doing this great work today? Again, as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today, it's time for us to stop being hesitant. It's time for us to stop being fearful in our calling and what has been tasked to us by Christ himself. Do you believe today? We are able to do greater works than those of Christ. 
To the Thessalonians, Paul wrote, God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. As you have heard me say before, God does not desire for any soul to suffer wrath. That is his wrath. God does not desire for us to suffer his wrath because we choose to ignorantly participate in living in sin, in living in opposition against him. God does not desire that for anyone. That is why he gives us opportunity after opportunity. That is why he has put us here. That is why he has poured out his Holy Spirit on us to offer that opportunity to those that are around us. Those that are choosing to walk and to live in opposition of him. For this reason, God has commissioned us to so great a calling to do the great work of leading souls away from sin and leading them to eternal life. This is why we are now a servant of his. You see, I don't know about you today, but these reasons, they motivate me. They motivate me to keep the instructions of Christ and to reach out to as many souls as I possibly can with God's message. I find myself being determined today that I am so determined that I often wonder if I am even doing enough. And I often ask God, what more can I do? Because as I said in my sermon last week, at my examination, when they asked, why do you preach? I said that I was called and I also have a desire to reach out to as many people as I can, but especially those of my generation and those after me, because I don't want them to walk in the way of sin. I want them to walk with Christ so that they can not only see the gates of heaven, but so that they can enter into the gates of heaven as well. I tell you again today that I am motivated. I tell you today that I am not just a servant of Christ. I am a devoted. I am a determined servant of Christ. Ministering and preaching the kingdom of God today because I want you there. I don't want you to be anywhere else. Sadly, I look around today and it seems that most people are not getting themselves ready. Seems that a lot of people are ignoring the word of God. Seems like a lot of people aren't paying it any attention. Seems that a lot of people are rejecting it, pushing it away. And I begin to wonder, well, why is this the case? Why are people choosing to reject? Why are people not getting themselves ready for the day to come? I feel that this comes from the end result of a lack of drive, a lack of motivation from those who should be sharing God's message. See, the onus, it is actually on us. Yet it seems a lot of us are lacking drive and lacking motivation to minister the name of Jesus Christ in our world today, to minister the kingdom of God in our world today. We, the servants of Christ, I want you to know and I want you to understand today that we can do better than that. That we can do more. I tell you today that we can do greater works. But it seems that many of us believers we love to settle for less. Seems that we love to settle for the thought that we cannot do anything all because we can't perform a miracle. And we begin to doubt in our hearts that we can do greater works than those that Jesus Christ did. Some of us are even unaware of that verse that Jesus said it himself that we can do greater works than those that he did. It's time for us to be aware today. We can do greater works. Imagine that. A servant of Christ believing that they can do nothing. So I ask you today again, how determined are you as a servant of Christ to do nothing? 
I ask you today, how determined are you as a servant of Christ to try and do something? A lot of us are sitting quiet this morning. A lot of us are sitting still in doing something in our world today. We are watching as souls are being lost to the wickedness that abounds all around us while saying in our hearts, well, I have my salvation. They got to get theirs when we actually can bring it to them with the message of Christ. I hate it when teachers used to do that when I was in school. When they used to say, I got mine. Now you can got you got to go and get yours. Well, teach me how to get mine. How are we any better? When we say, well, I got my salvation. Now they got to go and get theirs. Well, we can actually lead them to the one that can give them that salvation. That can heal them as we saw in our Sunday school lesson today. That can heal them not only physically, but can heal them spiritually. That can make them whole in their soul as we saw a couple of Sundays ago. Again, I tell you, we can do better than what we are doing today as a church. It's time for us to stop pushing folks away. It's time for us to start leading by example and bringing people in to Christ. I don't know if you hear me here today. Here lies another great work that the determined servant of Christ must perform as Jesus performed for those that were around him. As I mentioned earlier, Yes, Jesus did great works through the many miracles that he performed, but there was another great work that Jesus did that I mentioned there. The other great work that I mentioned there was his uplifting of those that were around him. How uplifting are you to those that are around you today? You see, this work of uplifting, it often goes overlooked by us who genuinely believe today. And so again, I ask you, how often are you uplifting all of those that are around you, but especially those who are your brothers and your sisters in Christ? This gets us into the next thing that the servant of Christ should be doing as a great work in our world today. You see, I feel that we as believers, I feel that we are always in need of uplifting And I feel that we often miss out on the opportunity of uplifting, of serving each other as we should be doing. In his first letter to the Thessalonians, Paul, he he set aside a portion of his letter to exhort the Thessalonians to do the great work of uplifting, the great work of serving all of those that were around them. See, this is a great work that is so vital, especially within the congregation of believers, within the congregation of faith. Because those that labor for the Lord, we often find ourselves beat upon by this world. We often find ourselves weighed down upon by this world that we live in. Now, this was not a new instruction that was coming from Paul as Jesus He taught the apostles the great work of being servants, of of serving one another. At the Feast of Passover, the disciples, they argued over who out of them was greater. And it was at the uh, the Feast of Passover where uh, Jesus, he set forth a very powerful example for them and therefore for us as well. It was at the Feast of Passover where he took the opportunity to wash the feet of the apostles in service to them. Jesus, after doing this, he said to them, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger and he who governs as he who serves. Jesus, he then asked them, he then asked for who is greater He who sits at the table or he who serves. He asked, is it not he who sits at the table that is greater? Yet he then pointed out to them. He pointed out to them. He said, I am among you as the one who is serving you. 
Jesus being the one who was holy, Jesus being the one that was divine, we know was far greater than the apostles. Yet he was the one that was serving not only them, but all of those that were around him. Do you see what I'm getting at there? If we cannot do right by each other, especially all of us in the faith, how can we do right by those who are outside of the faith? Did you hear that? So with this thought in mind, in first Thessalonians and in the fifth chapter and in the 11th verse, we'll begin to see these exhortations coming from Paul. Well, Paul, he first exhorts us to comfort and to edify one another. This exhortation is an exhortation of encouragement. We are to encourage each other in doing the great work of Christ. See, if we can encourage each other, then we can encourage those that are around us as well. Again, so often we meet challenge after challenge that can be so great and so overwhelming for us as servants of Christ. And as relentless and as challenge as challenging uh, as these things can be, the comfort and the uplifting should exceed the relentlessness of the challenges that we face as children of God. You see, a little comfort and a little uplifting, it can go a very long way in keeping the servants of Christ motivated and keeping us determined in doing the good work of God. With this thought in mind, Paul, he continued in his exhortation by urging us to recognize others who labor for the Lord. You see, Paul, he tells us there in the 12th verse, he tells us to esteem, that is to respect, that is to admire the fellow laborer very highly in the love for their great work. If we can't respect and admire each other, how can we do this for those who are outside of the faith? You see, that's what's missing in our world today. We, we, we don't respect, we don't admire each other. Seems like we don't even care for one another. And if we can't care for each other in the church, what do you think we care for those who are outside of the church? And we call ourselves servants of Christ, servants of the Lord. I tell you again today, we better start doing better than this. I genuinely believe that we ought to appreciate one another better than we do. I genuinely believe that we ought to appreciate one another in the work that we do in the world today, but especially when it comes to the work that we do for the kingdom of God. We have to do better than what we have been doing. Too often I feel that we punch down on one another. Too often I feel that we punch down on each other when we should actually be supporting one another. When we should actually be uplifting one another. This is what we should be doing for each other. If we can do that in the church, I believe that we can do that outside of the church as well today. I'm calling on us to be better servants of Christ today if you don't see what I'm getting at. From personal experience, I tell you that it can be very easy for the servant of Christ to feel like they are on an island all alone. It can be an isolating labor, an isolating task. This is where we should recognize, this is where we should esteem and support each other as a means, again, to keep all of us uplifted in our soul today. There are so many people in our world today that feel like they're on an island all alone because they are being punched down, they're being beat down upon by all of those that are around them, including the believer. 
including the one who is a servant of Christ. Just imagine where that person could be if they received just a little bit of urging and support. By comforting, by edifying, by recognizing, by esteeming each other, Paul said that we could be at peace among ourselves. And we wonder again why there isn't any peace in the world today. Well, in a lot of churches, there barely, there's barely any peace in, in a lot of churches today. I tell you again, as servants of Christ, it's time for us to start doing better than what we have been doing. After saying that we should be at peace among ourselves in the faith, we will see there in the 14th verse there in the fifth chapter of first Thessalonians, we see that Paul exhorts the servant of Christ to warn those who are unruly. This keeping each other in line is another great work of the servant of Christ that we must not take lightly. The unruly we should understand here are those that walk out of step in the faith. That's who Paul was speaking of there in that verse. As servants of Christ, there is one message we ought to share and we should all move on one accord. In a sense, Paul spoke about the unruly as those who walked in a disorderly manner, not working at all and were busybodies that went out and they did their own thing. Now, the unruly servant of Christ, they moved in a manner that could sow doubt. They moved in a manner that could sow confusion. Here's where the determined servant of Christ is called to warn the unruly so as not to sow any doubt or any confusion in their hearts and in the hearts of those that are around us as well. The unruly, by doing their own thing, they are a danger to themselves and they are a danger to all of those that are around them in that they could lead themselves and they could lead others away from the truth. As a servant of Christ, we are called on to speak the truth, to walk in the truth, to live by the truth. Again, I tell you today that I am determined to lead people towards the truth. I am determined today as a servant of Christ to lead people towards Christ. And I ask you today, what about you? Are you going to live unruly? Are you going to live disorderly? Or are you going to be obedient today? James said it best. The determined servant of Christ can save the souls of those that wander from the truth, from death. That is death spiritually. The determined servant of Christ can cover a multitude of sins. Again, I tell you, this sounds like a great work to me. A work of leading those who are unruly in their hearts today. Again, we are to lead by example, walking in the faith, living by the faith, living by every word of Jesus Christ. We should not live unruly. That is, we should not live disobediently to the way of Christ. Because the goal of a servant of Christ is to lead hearts to the Lord not away from God today. So on this thought, Paul exhorted us further to comfort the faint hearted, uphold the weak and to be patient with all. The faint of heart, we should understand are those who are too fearful to move in the service of the Lord. The weak are those who are weak in faith. We should be patient in encouraging and strengthening those of little to no faith so that they can withstand this wicked world and all that the devil will try to throw at them 
so that they can be made ready for the kingdom of God. Again, I tell you that this is a great work that you and I as servants of Christ, this is a great work that we have been called on to do. Are you doing this great work today? How determined are you to serve all of those that are around you today? Are you a determined servant of Christ? This work, again, I tell you, it is truly the great work that Jesus said that we will do. Should we choose to do so? And should we choose to do so? This is the greater work than those that Jesus did. Our service of one another. I ask you again, do you believe that you can do these great works? Serving one another, sharing the name of Christ, encouraging and uplifting all of those that are around you. See, we should never take the task laid out before us by Christ so lightly. Personally, I believe that both the world and the church is in the shape. It is in the condition that they are in today because the servants of Christ have slapped off in their service. How many of us have slapped off in our service today? I tell you today, I feel that the great work of Christ has slowed down in our world to the point to where it seems to almost have faded away to have faded out of our world. Because the one who's running around say, hey, I believe, I believe. Yet their actions don't speak to the fact that they believe because they aren't doing the great work that Christ has commissioned them to do. I want you to understand today that God has blessed uh, all of us with wonderful gifts. But how many of us are actually using, how many of us are actually putting those gifts to work today? God has blessed all of us with wonderful gifts, but we are not putting these gifts to any use. And yet I tell you today that this must change. Paul, he encouraged Timothy to stir up the gift of God, which was in him through the laying on of Paul's hands. Paul, he spoke of the giving of the Holy Spirit that was now dwelling inside of Timothy's heart. The Holy Spirit, again, has been poured out on all of us who genuinely believe, man and woman, all of us, sons and daughters, we have received the Holy Spirit through our genuine faith. And today, I encourage you to stir up the gift that God has poured out on to you. Lastly, we'll see there in 1 Thessalonians and in the 5th chapter and in the 15th verse, we we'll see that Paul exhorted the Thessalonians to see that no one renders evil for evil, but to always pursue what is good. As a servant of Christ, you are to pursue what is good. How many of us are doing that today? How many of us are pursuing what is good in our world today? We should always be determined as a servant of Christ to pursue what is good amongst not only ourselves, but amongst all of those that are around us as well. I genuinely believe that if we keep to the instructions that have been laid out before us, I genuinely believe that we will most certainly produce the greater works that Jesus said we will do. I think of people that, that came before me people like my dad, who to this date, August 21st, 2011, passed away with his heart determined, with his heart set to minister the name of Christ, to preach the kingdom of God, with heaven being a prepared place for a prepared people. How many of us want somebody to know today that heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. How many of us today want somebody to get their hearts right with the Lord before they are called out of this world? I don't know if you hear me here today. Oh, 
My dad, he was unashamed when it came to letting people know about God. And I used to look at him at first embarrassed when he used to stand up, when he would hear the choir singing at, uh, in, in, in school, they would sing uh, total praise and he would just stand up. Nobody else in the auditorium would stand up. But this one man would stand up shouting about God. And I used to be embarrassed, but I understand it today because I know what God has done for me. And today I stand unashamed with letting somebody know about the man named Jesus and what Jesus can do for someone's soul. How Jesus can heal us, not just physically, but how he can make us well spiritually, how we can have a home eternally in his heavenly kingdom. We don't have to rest somewhere else that is without him. I think about my dad's devotion today and I call on us to move in the same manner as a servant of Christ, being unashamed, being devoted to Christ, being determined to let somebody somewhere know about Christ and the kingdom of God. Are you determined today? With his voice and with his actions, my dad, he did the great work of opening many eyes to the Lord. How many of us are opening eyes to God today? How many of us are opening hearts today to God? This is the greater work that we can do. We can open hearts to the Lord today. So I encourage you today to have faith, to believe what Christ said that you are able to do and to go as the Lord said, go and do it. Let the Holy Spirit take over and guide you in your labors for the kingdom of God. We have the privilege to be able to reach out to hearts today through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit. And by the Spirit's guidance, we can lead souls to Christ. We can do the greater works. Again, we may, we may not be able to heal or restore a physical body by our touch, but by the words of God, we can heal and we can restore a soul unto God's glory. How is that not a great work? So again, I exhort you today, I encourage you today to move with no shame, but to move with great faith, to move with great determination in the hope of Christ, mighty and great will your works be if you do so. Amen, amen, amen.